Hello, and welcome to Richie Nix Gaming. Uh, today, we will be entering the playoffs uh, for the second and final time of the World 3 League. <coughs> Excuse me. I am joined again uh, by my good friend, Jake DeGregorio. Yo! Uh, his YouTube channel is Streetlight Productions. Uh, as you know, we've been... Uh, discussing video games and their history and went through a three-part discussion of uh, The Legend of Zelda. Uh, so I encourage you to go check those out. Uh, and uh, today we will be discussing Earthbound, or the, the Mother series. Yeah, there you go, yeah. He gets it. Um, but uh, it's a game, it's a game series rather, that I am wholly unfamiliar with. Uh, if you watched or listened to our discussion before we brought it up and I was very shocked to learn that Ness does not have all the same powers uh, in his own game that he has in uh, Super Smash Brothers so yeah he's more of like a the idea is that he represents the entirety of the cast of Earthbound so he does have the baseball bat it's actually very fitting we're talking about Earthbound for a baseball video because uh Literally, if Ness saw all these baseball bats <laughs> on the screen in the lineup right there, he would, he would nuts. salivate. Yeah. He'd salivate. He'd try to like hold nine baseball bats at once, like that one guy in that Hey Arnold episode. Hey Arnold! And then, anyways, I forget what bat it is, but uh, I think it's a Casey bat. There's some famous baseball bats. Um, it's too bad, though, because in Mother 3, the weapon of choice gets, down, gets downgraded to a literal stick. Lucas swings a stick. Like, his predecessors did baseball bats. Although at the end, he gets, like, a metal stick, which is... A, a metal stick? Better, it's like a staff at that point. It's, it's, it's weird. Yeah. Anyways, um... So, uh, with Earthbound, or Mother 2, as it is known in Japan, it's actually, we only got the sequel. And, um... It's very good, because most sequels back in those days were, like, the Super Nintendo version was literally just called Super Blank, you know? Right. Um, Metroid, Super Metroid. Um, and there was a few others, too. Um, but I basically forget. Anyways. <laughs> I didn't realize I chose the same emblem as that other team, but... So, the... Alright, so Mother 1 is for the NES, and we didn't get that until like two years ago, literally. This game was made in like 1987. We got it two years ago because Japan wanted to throw the Mother fandom a bone, which is a rabid fandom, by the way. They're, at, they're that very particular kind of fandom. And here's the thing, anybody that plays Earthbound becomes a cult fan. Hmm. It's like, it's just no matter what. Very few have ever experienced it, but those who do experience it... They're like, oh yeah, that game's amazing. Anybody I know who's played it, loved it. Let's put it that way. Um, but few have played it. Um, so, let's see. Uh, where do we begin? Well, Ness's name alone is purposely an anagram. Of... Oh, what? First inning, two-run home run? Come on. Great fucking fuck start. Guy. Yes, fuck that guy. Well... Ness's name is actually just an, uh, a rearrangement of the letters in SNES. Uh, I don't know if you ever noticed that. Yeah, like I, I always thought that they just turned Ness, as in Nintendo Entertainment System, into right. a, an actual name. Yeah, that could just as easily be that. Yeah. Um, here's the funny thing: Mother One, the protagonist, is named Ninten. <laughs> so that's 100 percent why they did that too. Like it's yeah. just like a more English. Americanized reference of the same kind. But here's the really cool thing. is that the, In the next game, the character's Lucas. You're like, where the hell did that come from? And that time, they just dropped that whole gimmick. But here's the thing. There is a gimmick about his name. He's a twin. And his twin brother is Claus. And their names are anagrams of each other. Uh, Lucas and Claus have the same five letters. Yeah. Yeah, and then Claus totally dies. So, uh... Spoilers! Barely. It happens right <laughs> at the beginning. I mean... And technically, well, I didn't even get the real spoiler about Claws. Um, it's very sad. So, back to when Earthbound wasn't as sad, because Mother 3 is really fucking sad. Yeah, why is it sad? It's... Do you want me to tell you? No, I just mean, like, why like why sad games? It... But it was... 
Why does everybody Strange. love sad games? Well, people, I mean, video games weren't considered art for the longest time. I mean, the fact that, you know, one could make you cry was simply mind-boggling. But I think Mother 3 did that a few times because the mother dies right at the beginning of Mother 3. Lucas's mom dies right off the bat. And uh, then Claus dies, like, immediately after. So Lucas Jesus. and his father are just, like, pretty much rent apart at that point. Uh, your father spends the rest of the game, actually, from that point on, wandering in the woods, asking you where if you found your brother yet. Because he's in denial that Claus died in the woods. He still looks for him. So, and then a whole bunch of other really sad shit happens. Because, like, Lucas and Claus live on an island of of uh, Robinson Crusoe, basically. But it's a simple place, and everyone... No, there's no technology. And the bad guys come in with technology, and it kind of has the whole uh, modern science fi technology bad vibe to it. Well, that's, the, that's the Lord of the Rings vibe, too. Yeah. So, basically, uh, so you see Lucas's world change. The world he had as a kid just totally changes over time. And the worst thing is you try to stop it... And well, basically, oh. so going back to uh, so what do you know about this, Richard? What, what story do you wise, know more about? Okay. story wise, nothing. All right, so it all begins. This is only three games. It's surprisingly dense, though, for three games. So hold on tight. <laughs> Prologue to game one. There was an old couple named, I believe, James and Maria. I could have the dad's name wrong, but whatever. Maria. Uh, What's important uh, is the, is the go name. Name Maria. George and Maria. It was George and Maria. So, basically, they get abducted in the 20s. Or, or thir uh, maybe 40s. It's called the 40s, actually. They get abducted in the 40s in America. This is right around the Roswell era. So... Yeah, that would be the 40s. Huh? Okay. So, basically, they get abducted, and, uh... Basically, for some reason or other, she gets made as, like, the nanny or sort for one of the kids on board... And it turns out the kid is like their prince. But she actually forms a connection with this alien mm. baby. And, you know, she was a piano teacher or something. I might be making that up. She was, she, she was like, musically inclined, at least. So she used to sing the baby this lullaby. The baby alien. Um, anyways. So, fast forward three generations later. You wake up as Ninten, and you walk into your sister's room, and her baby doll attacks you. No, sorry. Better yet, the lamp attacks you. I'm pretty sure it's either the lamp or the baby doll, or both. Oh, you know what? It is the lamp. So a lamp attacks you. The very <laughs> first thing in this fucking game is that you get attacked by a fucking piece of... A lamp. I love lamp. <laughs> so... And the baby doll attacks you. But you beat the baby doll, it goes... It plays a song it's never played before. It goes... Uh, how's the first one go? Ba, 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 ba. And that's it. And it only plays once and it's gone, but something special about it. So you go around and, and people are acting weird and animals are acting weird in the town. And, uh, you, I believe the second object is like a bird in a cage. You walk by the bird in your adventures and it goes... eight objects throughout the game that you'll find that will whistle melodies or play melodies at you. They're all some sort of thing that would normally be making music anyway, like mm -hmm. a wind-up baby doll that sings a song, or a bird in a cage that tweets. What is a singing monkey? That's kind of weird. Um, one of them is a cactus, where the wind whistles through it and makes the, the noise. Uh, one of them is a dragon who just is guarding the sheet music, a la Smaug. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Anyways, so Ninten and his friends, he goes through all these towns and people attack him and zombies attack him and all sorts of American uh, fare and stuff attacks him. So he gets there and he's like... <laughs> he goes back and forth to this land called <coughs> Magicant. And it's like this land where like you're walking on pink clouds and there are kitties swimming in the clouds you're walking on. And uh, there's like a statue made of like gnomes. I always imagined it actually like a like one of those froofy weird displays in a, in a, gra in a grandma's kitchenette in the room no one ever uses. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of what it feels like. And there's this lady named Queen Mary. 
So but you go there periodically throughout the game. She tells you she wants to hear all eight of them. Out by a mile. Can't steal on Sam Will Tarley, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so, um, sorry, I didn't catch that. <laughs> so, basically what ends up happening is you start to figure out that people are starting to act weird because uh, aliens are interfering in their country. Now, luckily, what Maria did on the ship, the UFO, was uh, sing to the baby. What George did was try to find a way off, and he found it. He actually found a way to use the psychic weaponry the aliens were using called Psy, or PK. That's where we get PK fire, PK yeah. thunder, PK flash. He found a way to use it. Why is it Psy? Why is Psy also PK? Well, because PK is how it was pronounced in the Japanese version, or something like that. That's the but we just call it PSI here. It's like, like psychic. Okay. So, really, the Earthbound fan before Smash came out, it was Psy Fire, Psy Freeze, you know, Psy Life Up. Anyways, so, uh, Ninten has Psy Powers, and his companion, Ana, actually has all the offensive Psy Powers that you see in Smash Bros. Um, then he has his other friend, the staple, the guy who does not have magic or PK, but he's like a an inventor kid, he can shoot bottle rockets and stuff. Uh -huh. At one point you get a little gang member in your group. Um, I don't know about that. But <laughs> you eventually the, the enemies get more and more alien, like obviously alien, and it's clear there's going to be a, a sort of alien attack. So eventually you learn that the eight melodies are the song, they combine to make the song that Maria St. Gygus and the UFO. Mm -hmm. That's what you're looking for, the eight parts of that song. And, yeah, kind of obvious in hindsight. But, yeah. Um, so. Maria, yeah, uh, so the last one that plays is the robot. It actually guides you up the mountain. Uh, there's a robot named Eve, 20 years before Wally. <laughs> uh, for real. I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Again, a, by the way, Samuel just picked him off. Easily, Jeez. easily. Don't even try to steal on this dude. Jeez. I I have his fielding monster. I have his fielding throwing an agility up so high that like no, you can't steal on him. So anyway, um, yeah, so. oh yeah. Uh, God so damn it! This knuckleball. <laughs> why? Why? Why the knuckleball? So Eve goes up the mountain, or Eve guides you up the mountain, and she breaks, and she sings the last part of the song. And the song's called The Eight Melodies, and it's cute, and it's adorable. It's actually a recorded version with the children's chorus singing it somewhere. So, eventually you reach Gygus, and you, you can't beat Gygus at all. But the whole point of this final battle is one of those, like, story final battles, and, like, it's a hard final battle once you figure it out. Mm -hmm. So... You have to last eight turns against him. One of your party members has to sing every turn. Oh, okay. And if you sing to him for eight turns, sing the eight melodies, uh -huh. or some number like that, he goes away. Because he uh, can't attack the planet that has to do with the lullaby he was uh, he was sung to as a child. Right. But he's all like, I can't do this. Yep. You, guys are, you guys are pulling my heartstrings here. No, he attacks you viciously until you complete this process, but um, that's why you gotta like shield somebody. Oh. The point of what I'm thinking about I mean, his name is only Gaige at this point, but Guy, he's like every single attack of his is a describe. Oh, yes, his. Pablo Sanchez. I'm sorry, that was pretty epic. Oh, no so he dove, they didn't expect him to catch it, so they Ooh. both ran. Mm -hmm. And he dove, he caught it, and he threw the guy back. He threw him out at second before he had time to get back and tag up. Nice. That was what they like to call a janitor throw. Uh, cleaning up after the pitcher. <laughs> mm. That guy dove too, though. Jeez. <laughs> All right, anyway. So, basically... Yeah, every single attack of his, of Gag's, is referred to by the screen as you cannot grasp the true form of Gag's attack. And then a whole bunch of crazy shit happens to you. No. People will die, you'll, you'll, people will get like poisoned or sick or something, and, you know, tons of damage. And uh, 
Is it randomized? randomized? It is randomized. But randomized. You're still, you're still screwed if you get hit by it. And you will get hit by it. It just happens every turn. So, um, anyways. Yep. This, uh, so you beat this alien by singing to him. He goes back. Fast forward a few decades later, maybe. Maybe just one decade later. But, uh, there's another kid, Ness. Now we're in Earthbound. Earthbound! And, and basically, Dagus goes back to his alien boys. Like, what happened? And he was like, well, the only thing I found is so I ran away. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you can't. You can't do you that. You can't afford this uh, amount of uh, emotional collapse. This huge emotional weak spot. So here, why don't you go out? And, and rid oh, yourself of your emotions and become the most evil being in the universe. Oh. So he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just, you know, become the most evil thing in the entire universe? Okay. So he goes out and he does that. <laughs> <laughs> Through, like, extreme training, he, like, goes into himself deeply and he's like, all right, well, anyway. But I'm not joking. Gaius literally becomes evil itself. He fuses with the very force that is evil. He's like the embodiment of the dark side of the force. Yeah. Um, he is evil itself. And so, basically a meteor falls in the sky. And uh, you walk over to it, your Ness. You walk over to it, you're like, what's in this meteor? And a little bumblebee comes out of the meteor. And the bug bunny's like, my name is Buzz Buzz. I'm from the future. <laughs> That's a real thing that happens. And, I would um, think that I went insane. <laughs> I'd be like, no, you're not. You have psychic powers, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what? And then basically, um, so you actually, you have to fight your way back down the mountain after the meteor. And Buzz Buzz, like, Buzz Buzz is loaded. He has PK Fire. He has PK Thunder. Buzz Buzz, like, fucks people up. This little <laughs> bumblebee you're with is doing all the real damage while you're just like sitting there doing nothing and your fat neighbor Pokey is trying to hide or something. So uh, you learn that your neighbor Pokey is about to be the Gary Oak of your adventure, only he gets way worse. Um, so basically you're with Ash this... <laughs> Gary was here. Ash is a loser. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> Here's the thing, the company that made uh, Pokemon before this, they made Earthbound. Oh, yeah? So there's a lot of things that happen in Pokemon where you're like, that's from Earthbound. Um, like Dragonite, actually. There is an item in Earthbound which came before Pokemon called a Bag of Dragonite. And I think they used that. I'm also apt to believe that when you hear the Mother 3 ending, you'll think that the Mother series may actually be a prequel to Pokemon. And that's actually a theory that I think is interesting, but... Anyways, so, uh, you and the intergalactic honey, honeybee warrior, uh, Buzz Buzz, walk into... <laughs> the kick it over that. You walk into your neighbor's house, and this, this Buzz Buzz just, like, laid waste to everybody <laughs> outside, right? Literally psychic super bee. He is fucking shit up. So you're talking, and, like, Pokey's parents are yelling at him, and Pokey's mom walks over to you, and she's like, Is that a bee? And kills Buzz Buzz instantly. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Buzz Buzz! <laughs> Why? This thing, this thing just killed aliens. And literally, a, little, a lady walked over and just nonchalantly killed him. Buzz well, Buzz! He has some dying words. He says, like, some stuff and then he dies. Um, basically, Gygus is coming and because. Is that bitch is, able to hear him? Does she know what she did? No, I think she walks upstairs after that. Oh, oh and funny, in this same scene, Pokey's dad beats him. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, fun, fun. Buzz Buzz. Uh, so, Buzz Buzz is dead, but he warns that Gygus is approaching, and because Gygus is the force of evil itself, that means that evil people in the world are going to start to feel his influence. It's kind of a Randall Flagg character. I understand. Mm. You know, the closer he gets, the people who would be more apt to be seduced by the devil fall him. Yeah. So people who are evil start acting strangely, and they start actually attacking Ness. That's why Ness attacks old ladies and hippies and old men, because they attack him first. So basically as Ness... Uh, I didn't he, know he fought old ladies and old men. Oh yeah, there's a... I mean, it's a turn-based RPG, and they use that humor to their advantage. Like, when you fight, there's like an old man, 
Like, you'll actually attack him and do damage. Like, like Ness swung his bat. 50 damage. He's like, the old man complained about today's youth. 200 damage. Like, what? <laughs> he complained about today's youth and I got hit for half my life total? <laughs> no, I think maybe what happens is... Um, so... <coughs> And there's a moment where it's like you face the hippie, and one of his moves is the hippie brandished a comb, and that's it. No, <laughs> what? no one takes any damage. <laughs> Just took a comb out. I mean, like, isn't it like a stereotype that they aren't like brushing their hair? I think it's like why a would pick. he? Why would he brandish a comb? Maybe he's trying to throw it. I don't know. <laughs> well, he was called New Age Retro Hippie, which means a lot of things. New so, Age Retro Hippie. That's like an oxymoron. Yeah, that's, that's what I mean. So, basically, uh, yeah, uh, Ness, Ness goes around. <coughs> he gets the eight melodies of the earth this time. He has to visit these eight wonders of the world, and each of them will teach him a melody. It's a new song this time. Okay. And, uh, funny, the tail end of that song is actually Ness's victory of fanfare in Smash Brothers. Um, that's what they use. So... Basically, you get the same kind of people. This time you're joined by a prince, like an Asian prince. He's clearly like an Asian character in this one. He's an Asian prince that like pops in, pops out, pops back in. He actually is at your party for most of the end of the game, but he drops out for important parts because he has to go learn attacks. So, his name is Poo, by the way. That's his name. P-O-O, Poo. He's an Asian prince. And... So as Ness, who has like Ness's psychic powers in the game are more like pure psychic. Okay. Like in the first one, Nintendo has telepathy, and then Ness has like psychic barrier, psychic life up, psychic mana drain, psychic attack up, psychic defense down. You know, Ness was all like the psychic powers where you could actually see someone like doing something like a psychic. Uh-huh. Versus making fire or lightning, which is typically interpreted as magical. So um yeah, all the offensive side goes to Paula, and um, we have Jeff and Pooh. So no, sorry. Uh. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, you find the eight melodies of the earth, and basically Pokey meets you like periodically along the way, the way Gary, the way Blue does in Red and Blue, and. Um, he gets more, only he's getting more evil every time. Like, he's going from a jerk to, like, pure evil. And finally, he meets you for the final boss battle. And he's, he fights you alongside the final boss. He's mm. totally turned. He's evil. So, um, yeah, you're on this adventure. There's, like, the Mr. Saturns with his weird hermaphroditic, uh, androgynous slash hyperdrogynous, um, this thing is, it's a walking head with a must, with whiskers and like thick eyebrows and a alfalfa sprout on its head, like an alfalfa, little rascal's alfalfa. Yeah, yeah, the cowboy. And he, and he has a bow tie for that. Oh, then, yeah. It's a very, they're in Smash Bros, you can throw them. Um, so the Saturn Valley exists. You fight a pile of vomit, and you fight oh. another pile of vomit. Oh! Yeah. And, uh, one part is actually amazing. You get stuck, you get locked in a shopping mall. And you have to fight your way out. Um, but you have to take the escalators up to get out. There's a few other amazing gameplay moments. Just tough thing. Oh, there's a... So you finally, you actually stop a gang. And... Yeah, you stop a gang in a town. You stop them from existing. That's and the good. police bring you in. And they bring you in the back room. And the police proceed to brutality you. Oh. Yeah, you have to beat all the cops. There's the like fuck? Five cops surround you. And you beat four of them and the other one runs away. And then the inspector comes in and he's like, you know what? So the police captain sees his men misconducting. And he's like, move aside, boys. I'm the captain. I'll beat this child. And uh, you beat him, too. So, the game is absolutely wild. And, uh, say. oh, yeah. Um, this does all this stuff. 
You go to a city where uh, it's like a neon city, like everything's black because it's surrounded by neon lines flashing different colors. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this place, they don't tell you this, but eventually you start to figure it out. Because people start acting funny. But they're only acting funny because in here, no means yes and yes means no. So after a while, you get like denied things you're supposed to be given or given things you're supposed to deny. You're like, why is there nobody listening to me? And you realize some of the dialogue like gives you the hints like people no means yes and yes means no this is a little inverse land called moonside it's like because there are like some pretty big decisions to be made there and if you make them and you forget you're like oh yeah i want that yes oh wait a minute no fuck and it's gone like one time decisions and you have to remember that no means yes and yes means no yeah and you spend so much time there you sort of forget um plus there's battles there too so there's battles breaking this up so you might walk out of a battle and sort of forget this sort of central rule so you have to go back in time to get Gaius. Um, he's hiding in the past. And uh, this tunnel actually... Uh, it has... I should mention these two musical facts. Um, Emily needs me to go inside. Make a bottle. We'll come back out. Alright. Can pause it? Alright. Uh... Got called inside by Emily uh, to help with Owen, and now it's been days, and uh, I'm hanging out with Owen at home, days after that first part was recorded, watching Archer, and uh, Jake and I will continue our discussion at another time, but I just wanted to make sure I got a video done for you guys. My mom is coming to drop bagels off. My brother-in-law got a bunch of free bagels from uh, a local bagel place simply because they made too many and I guess he just went at the very end of the day. So uh, he's donating a bunch of sesame and cinnamon sugar bagels to uh, Emily, me, and Owen. Drop. Did you turn it on? Method man. Two home runs in a row.
<sighs> Owen has been sick. It's been a real pain in the ass. Uh, I know he can't help it, and he's just a sick little boy, but we, like, haven't gotten any sleep the past three days. Don't do it. You're being a bad boy. That was very rude. You're being a very bad boy. What, you want up now? Ouchie! Why are you hitting me? Oh, did you hear grandma? Did you hear your grandma? 
<gasps> what? Oh, your grandma is here. Oh, my mom came by and dropped off those bagels and hung out for a minute. It's not going to mean anything unless I hit a home run or something. See? See? Are you a mature audience? Oh, you want to come sit with Dada? <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. I don't want your binky. No, thank you. Daddy doesn't need a binky. 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 Yeah, that's right. Good job. You smart little boy. Mm-hmm. Button. Was Daddy playing baseball? Button. Stop. Stop. Oh, really? Stop. You are not the one playing. You're not the one playing. Don't you hit me. Don't hit. Stop it. What? You're being a bad boy. You're being a very bad boy. Yeah, go dance. <laughs> Jesus, why is everybody coming right now? Like, that... Thank you.
Why was I out? What the fuck? Can you stop hitting me? So, uh, that's it for this one. Uh, we're down a game. Um, so, uh, you know, wish me luck. And, uh, please like, please subscribe, please share. Uh, please keep leaving game suggestions. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, make uh, requests for... Uh, the history, the video games you'd like to hear the history of. Uh, and that is that. Uh, I am also editing Shadow of Mordor videos and Fortnite videos. So, uh, look forward to those in the near future. Alright, see you guys down in the comments.